This is my review of the Shure SM93 lavalier microphone. Here's what's inside the bag. First of all, you have the mic itself, this little pill bottle with some accessories. I'll get to that in a minute. And this is what they call an inconspicuous pre-amplifier. I suppose it is smaller than your typical transmitter. So this mic has about a four-foot cable, which is pretty standard for a lav mic like this. Uh, this connector is called a TA4F. You can see it has four pins. It looks very similar to the TA5F for electrosonics. Now, on the capsule end of the mic, you can see it's about three-eighths of an inch by about a quarter of an inch across. And that tiny little dot on this side, I don't know if you can see it here, but that is the actual capsule itself. For comparison's sake, let's look at the Rode Lavalier. They're both small enough to hide under your clothes. Okay, back to this thing. It is solid like a tank. It's all metal, and this belt clip is serious. I've had a lot of Shure microphones over the years. What I've learned about them is that however you feel about the way they sound, you can't deny they are reliable. This cable may be a little thick, maybe thicker than you want it, but you know it's not going to break on you. The thing is just made to last. That's just how it is. All right, back to this little pill bottle. There's this little round foam ball for a pop filter or windscreen. I have a couple clips here. One of them has two places for the wire to clip into it. And there's two ways you might want that. One way would be to put two mics in it. You see this a lot in live broadcast situations. So you can have, you know, a backup mic. The other way is to use it as strain relief, something like this. Make a loop and then back through. That'll also help keep the handling noise down as the wire rubs against your clothing and whatnot. Then you put this lovely gray ball over the capsule, like so, and there it is. You are ready for the evening news, or, you know, whatever. Again, for comparison's sake, the Rode Lavalier. It has a little wire spring clamp that holds the capsule, and there's three grooves on the side of the mic itself, uh, and you can feel the wire of the spring clamp kind of click into it when you've got it in the right place. Also, on the back of this clip, there's a a slot that you can shove the wire into and it'll help uh, control the you know any any pulling of the wire and here's your pop filter you gotta admit this pop filter does look better than the the gray ball anyway I want to tuck that wire inside of the clip too it'll it'll work better that way there we are and it is a tight fit back there you've really got to shove it in but you know it won't come out so the Rode Lavalier is a good sounding mic, but it costs quite a bit more than the SM93. Now the SM93 has a nice low end roll off, and they do that because lavaliers have a tendency to pick up a fair amount of extra bass from being close to your chest. Uh, either mic will get you there with a little EQing, but for testing sake, all the samples will be free of any post-processing. No EQing or compression or hum removal or any of that business. One of my favorite ways to mount a lav mic is with a vampire clip. It's quick and it's clean and it's easy. But they don't make one for this mic that I'm aware of. So here's what I found. This is a vampire clip made for a Countryman B6, which is super tiny. I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to do the same thing. What I'm going to do is I can open it up with a 16th inch drill like so. And that's going to allow for the wire of the SM93 to fit inside. And just like that, like it was made for it, it fits the chips. Here's the vampire clip from Rode. The thing is to me, it looks like it's built upside down. It should go together like this, but instead it goes like this. See what I mean? And it clicks into the grooves. It'll click into any one of those three grooves, just like the wire from the tie clip. This one I have covered in moleskin. That helps cut down on some of the handling noise and clothing noise. Uh, I also like to make a loop in it like so, so the cable has a chance to stretch before it comes loose. You can see it still fits in my modified vampire clip too. So that's a little bonus. 
Something else I should mention, the mic is also designed to be used with all Shure wireless belt pack transmitters. That's not to say that all of the microphones that are made to go with Shure wireless will work with this preamp. Believe me, I've tested them. They, they won't. One last physical comparison, here's the Rode Micon 5, made to work with XLR connections. It's much smaller and a little lighter, but the belt clip is plastic. I don't think it'll break too easy, but I like this metal one better. Both of these require phantom power in order for the mic to work. Okay, that's enough of this. Let's go outside. So here's what these two microphones sound like outdoors. My dogs are out here in the yard with me, and there's leaves on the ground because it's the fall. There's some airplanes flying by, there's some birds chirping, and there's some traffic driving around. I have both of the microphones hidden underneath my shirt. There's no wind, and this does help with wind, but that's not an issue today. I have them both plugged into this Zoom H5 recorder, and I have the levels on the shirt set up just a little bit higher. So here's what they sound like when I'm driving down the road in my truck. Still using the H5 recorder, same settings. Still hidden underneath my shirt. So here's what they sound like when I'm driving down the road in my truck. Still using the H5 recorder, same settings. Still hidden underneath my shirt. And here's how they sound when I'm sitting on the couch. And here's how they sound when I'm sitting on the couch. So here's how it breaks down for me. As far as the Shure SM93, the pros are the rugged build quality. This thing's gonna last you forever. Uh, the clear, articulate signal. I actually prefer this mic out of the two for my voice. A nice small size. It can be hidden. It's wired for XLR or for TA4 wireless, and it's affordable at 155 US dollars. As far as the cons go, it does have a pretty high handling noise. It's not usable with any other wireless systems. It has that ugly pop filter and it does have a little bit weaker signal than the Rode. As for the Rode Lavalier, the pros are the low handling noise, the fact that it's adaptable to any wireless system with those Micon connectors has a very strong signal. It's also very small, so it can also be hidden, and when it's not hidden, it's nicer looking. It also has a replaceable cable, which can be a good thing. As far as the cons go, those delicate Micon connections, I have had a couple of those that were bad. That purchase price does not include any connectors, so you can't use it without buying some kind of an adapter to tie it into your system. And it costs more initially at 250 US dollars at the time of this video, plus $30 for this Micon 5 XLR. So there you are, a couple of lavaliers that can be used with XLR systems for live sound or for recording. Thanks for watching.